Hello there, IELTS students. Welcome to IELTS Podcast. You no longer have to worry, fret, or panic about IELTS because we are here to guide you through this test jungle. Enjoy these IELTS tutorials, and if you need more help or want to access the famous online course, you can visit us at IELTSpodcast.com. Hello there, you wonderful bunch of IELTS students. My name is Ben Worthington, and today we are going to be doing some model answers for some recent IELTS speaking part three questions. Now, I'm going to also just break down my answers and try and extract some useful features from what I've been saying so that you can get even more value out of this tutorial. Now, if this is your first time listening, well, congratulations to you because you are in the best place possible. You're making use of your idle time. You know, grab a pen as well. Make it even more valuable, our time together. And most importantly, thank you. Thank you for joining me. And I hope we can get deliver i hope we can deliver you to you the the most valuable lesson possible to make the full use of your time so very quickly my name is ben and i'm from the north of england uh from around manchester i've been living abroad for the last 20 years so i know what it's like living in a foreign country and i also know what it's like studying trying to learn a foreign language i've been learning spanish for quite a while. I'm still not there as good as I'd like to, you know, but as you're probably aware, you just got to keep on putting in the time. Uh, I started off teaching English um, back in Spain and I quickly specialized in IELTS because that's where all the motivated, smart, ambitious students like yourself are. Those are the types of types of students I just love working with and at first I was struggling with IELTS. It's a difficult topic to teach. It's a difficult area of the English language. You know, there's academic English, there's time management skills, there's all of these other facets that we've got to take into account when we're preparing for the for the exam. So that's why I set up IELTS podcast. I started interviewing all the professionals I could find, take what they teach me, put it in the course, well, test it out on students if it works, put it in the course. And fast forward to today where we've got the AI essay checking tool, which is incredibly popular. We're getting a ton of signups every single minute. Actually, that's an exaggeration. Every single hour, we get at least a couple of signups. So uh, go and check that out at IELTS podcast. And while we're on the topic of AI, to help us today, we're going to be using a new tool that I built with the help of a developer. And this is called Bye Bye Human English Tutor.com. And when you go there, you can sign up. At the moment, you can only sign up with Google. So um, get that Gmail if you need it. And what you can do, right, is you can simulate part three of the exam. And I'm not going to waste my time or our time explaining it, but you just go there, you hit sign up, then you go to simulate exam and you can simulate part three. And I'm going to do it live now, right now, on this uh, tutorial, just to help you get started. So we click start. Should students have physical education and do sports at school? Should students have physical education and do sports at school? So I'm trying to simulate a real exam. So let's go. I hit record and I start my answer. Allow microphone access. Yes, absolutely. Students should definitely uh, have physical education and play sports at school. This is because it's just incredibly important for the students to get their heart rate up to engage in physical activities, but also they learn other skills such as working in a team, especially if it's um, you know a team sport such as cricket or football. So yes, definitely 
physical education should be a priority or at least definitely included in schools. So as I'm speaking, I can see my answer being transcribed in front of me, which helps me, you know, just keep account of what I'm saying, which is incredibly useful. And then afterwards, I just hit submit and it will go on to the next question. So the benefits of this are that it's going to choose a random topic and it's just going to get you into the habit of thinking on your feet. That means like coming up with answers immediately. Now, later, hopefully in about a month or so, the site is going to be faster. At the moment, we're just struggling with that. So you'll be able to blast through it a bit quicker. And also, you can only use it on your laptop and desktop at the moment, but that's going to change in the future. Now, let me just break down my answer to give you some uh, quick advice for when you have your exam. So first of all, the question was a should. Now, this is an excellent opportunity for you to show um, one of the criteria in the exam, which is um, fluency and pronunciation, especially the pronunciation aspect. And one aspect of pronunciation is your intonation, how you sound. Now, when we get a should question, as I said, it's an incredible invitation for you to just jump in with both feet. And that's exactly what I did. I said, yes, absolutely. And I showed some enthusiasm there. And I did this by by intonating, in, ah, <laughs> by pronouncing, pronunciate, pronouncing, oh my word. And I, I went up to show some enthusiasm. I said, yes, absolutely. Can you hear the rhythm there? And that just gets us off to a good start. It'll help you with your confidence as well. So we jump in with both feet and we kind of paraphrase the question a little bit. This helps us to stay on track. And then we build out our answer by saying this is because. And now we give a reason or a couple of reasons. We don't want to go into like a full, uh, you know, paragraph answer, just a couple of lines, maybe four, four, five. Um, and then we can finish off with, and that's why in this case, and that's why students should definitely play sports at school. Now, in my reason, in my reasoning, I said this is because it's just incredibly important for the students to get their heart rate up. That's a lovely little expression there. It just means, you know, to get moving. And then I also explained the second point, which is the benefits of teamwork. So just to summarize, we had a should question. We jumped in there with a strong opinion. Yes, absolutely. We showed our intonation skills and then we paraphrased. And then we built out the answer with one or two reasons. In this case, I gave two reasons, the heart rate up and teamwork. And then I summarized the question. And once I've done that, if we're using our online uh, site, byebyehumanenglishtutor.com, we'll, we will see the answer transcribed in front of us. And then we can just hit submit and it'll move on to the next question. So let's just do that immediately. What qualities should an athlete have? I guess the qualities of an athlete depend largely on the sport the, stu the athlete is playing. For example, a Formula One driver has to be possibly a little bit aggressive, but also patient to wait for their opportunity as to, you know, when to overtake or when to use up their tires. Whereas a cricket player might have to have good visual skills. I guess a Formula One driver also has to have excellent visual skills. So I guess it largely depends on the sport, but definitely overall, they should have a high level of fitness because most sports require that. So I guess it largely just depends on the sport. So in that answer, 
I totally forgot to hit record, so <laughs> make sure you don't make that mistake. But again, uh, with this with this one, it's a tricky one because obviously every sport is going to require different physical or different qualities. And in my case, I just went for sports that I like, which are a fo- a Formula One and cricket. And I did notice a, a contradiction there in my answer, but I corrected it. You know, I said, whereas in cricket, actually, I guess you need uh, patience as well and obviously good vision. And then I just kind of justified my answer by going back to the original, which was it depends on the sport, which is kind of like a bit of a get out, get out of jail card. You know, you can't take an absolute opinion because every sport's different. So using the it depends clause is quite a useful way to just get you get yourself out of that situation. Okay, I'm going to I just hit refresh because I got in a bit of a mess with my own with my own web app. Anyway, I'm going to start again. So we'll have a different topic each time you start the exam. You're going to start. A totally different topic. What do you think of online advertising? Right, what do you think of online advertising? Hit record. Online advertising is quite a tricky subject nowadays. I think in some cases it could be seen as quite invasive because of all the data collection some websites engage in. However, on the other hand, I guess it could be quite beneficial because they collect all this personal data and then they give us adverts related to products that they think we want. So I think it depends largely. It's such a broad area. It really depends on what kind of specific advertising the viewer or the receiver is actually receiving. But overall, I think it's quite beneficial. So I can see my answer in front of me. What I'm going to do is just break it down. Again, I used my depends clause because this is a really broad subject. Uh, I used some topic-specific vocabulary. I used cookies. I used engagement. And I also used, you know, a hypothetical sort of like reasoning, which was definitely going to get me points because I'm using the modal verbs and I said it could be seen as, which is quite a useful phrase, actually. So I didn't take the question personally. I kind of took a step back and looked at both the pros and the cons to give a balanced decision. And then I went back and I said, uh, I circled back and used my depend clause and just said, well, it kind of depends on the advertise, advertisements that the receiver is viewing. So that's another useful sort of like uh, feature that you can in- introduce into your answers, which is to go to, to use the conditionals and pick up some points for grammatical range and accuracy. Let's move on. Are there any great online advertisements? I guess there must be somewhere. Personally, none of them, no great online adverts come to mind at this very moment. I guess a great advert is one that might educate somebody or might engage them or persuade them to purchase the product. Um, So to answer your question, I think there are some great advertisements, but unfortunately, none of them, I can't think of one right now. So this was a great example of like what to say when you don't know what to say. In my case, I honestly couldn't think of a great online advertisement, but I kind of digressed uh, and I just talked about what the qualities of a great advertisement might be 
Um, I gave some examples, which is a useful feature uh, you can also include in your answers. You know, for example, I guess it should uh, persuade the person to buy or it could educate them. So this is another useful feature you could introduce. And again, we're hypothesizing, which is like higher language use. I guess it's this. And importantly, I didn't take it personally. I didn't say, I didn't take the answer personally. I didn't say, oh, I saw this great advertisement once. No, I just kind of hypothesized and generalized, which are also valuable features for you to, in, to incorporate into your exam. Let's move on. What do people usually buy? I guess people would usually buy products related to advertisements that they've seen. Um, I know some people who buy lots of nutrients and supplements online because they are forever receiving advertisements about them. And I guess as well, People would buy, obviously, what they want, but also they would buy realistically. Like, for example, you know, if you lived in a small apartment with, which is difficult to locate and you've had problems in the past with postage and delivery, then it's hardly likely you're going to purchase something very expensive that's going to be difficult to deliver so I guess it depends largely on what you want and your own personal circumstances as to what you would buy so again in this answer it's so general isn't it it's so difficult just to think of an answer so what did I do again I took a step back and I just tried to like envision certain situations of what people would buy um, th in this scenario, it's like common sense, you know? You're not going to be purchasing a rowing machine if you live in a small apartment. It's hard, highly unlikely. You're not going to be buying thing expensive things if you've got parcel thieves in your apartment. But the main point here is just using language, using your English skills, staying on topic, and given a realistic answer. It's very similar to task two. It's not, the content of your answer is important. It has to be on topic and you do have to answer the question. But because it is a language exam, it's not like mathematics where we have a definite solid answer. Your answer can be very broad. So this is why you know, you've got to stay on topic and you've got to give a realistic answer that correlates to the question, but you don't have to, you, you shouldn't really get stressed if you're not answering the question specifically in a way that you might originally believe that the examiner wants. As I said, this is a language exam and it's more about the quality of your language. So you can hypothesize, you can go around the bushes a little bit if you are caught off topic, if you're caught and if your mind goes blank. Let's move forward. Let's do one more question. For some reason, there is a bug, so it's not letting me do more than a couple of questions. If When this happens to you, you just have to hit refresh and you'll start a new topic. So I apologize for that and... Um, if you do have ideas when you are using this, please just email us at ben at IELTS podcast, put speaking exam in the subject. Um, and I'd love to get some more feedback from you. Um, because as I said, this is an ongoing project and we just want it to improve and get better and get better. So I've hit refresh. I'm going to start the exam. Should students have physical education and do sports <laughs> at school? There we go. Oh, how lovely. Let's do it again. We've had that question. What are the differences between painting and drawing? I guess drawing is more forgiving because you can usually 
erase what you've drawn, whereas with painting, it's more difficult to go back if you've made a mistake. Also, I think painting is seen as a higher level of artistic expression, possibly because of the fact that it is less forgiving and also most of the world's famous art is painted especially in the classical area uh, in the classical uh, sense so i guess those are the main differences and also just one last thing i think drawing is easier to get started with uh, whereas painting is probably more difficult to get started with so I guess those are the differences, the main differences between the two media. So there we go. With that answer, we're using a comparative conjunction, which is incredibly valuable. Like we did earlier, we, we, we explained both sides. In this one, we're making a comparison, painting and drawing. Uh, we try to incorporate some specific topic specific vocabulary like the classical era we also use some high level uh, terms like forgiving because we can use forgiving you know your friend crashes your car you can forgive him but when we're talking about skills or making mistakes and a medium for example uh, that where you can erase your mistakes it's called um, it's quite forgiving so it's a higher use of a, a more normal everyday term. You don't have to incorporate that in your exam, but also if you, but if you can, then more power to you. You're definitely on the right track. So the, I think one of the benefits actually of using this app is that you're going to get questions um, that will, as I said before, make you think on your feet. And also, you'll be able to see your answer in front of you. And also, if it's not being transcribed properly, then you also know that you need to work on your pronunciation. And ideally, it will show you the words that are not being pronounced properly because it'll transcribe them incorrectly. And that'll be a signal to you like, okay, I've got to improve my pronunciation of, of those words. Let's do another question. Why do some people keep a painting for a long time? I guess people paint for a long time because they found a skill that they like. They found a hobby that probably brings them a lot of benefits. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep doing it. And also, I guess there's this element of wanting to get better. So I guess it's one of those lifelong skills that you can just keep on working on and it'll just get better. Your skills will compound over time. And... Obviously, like I said before, it must be enjoyable if people keep on doing it. So enjoyment must be the one of the main reasons as well. So in that answer, we conjugate, we use the different forms of enjoyable. We use enjoy, enjoyable, enjoy, um, enjoyment, which is quite a good way to avoid repeating yourself. Again, I hypothesize because I'm not entirely sure why people do keep drawing. So I use the phrase, I guess it's because, which is also another la useful language feature that you probably need to incorporate into your um, exam answers. And also, you know, some other higher level terms like compounding. I mean, the skill level compounds if you keep doing it day in, day out. So just some useful features there for your own exam. Right. As I said before, this site is called byebyehumanenglishtutor.com. It works best on your laptop. And we're just building out the IELTS features at the moment. But we're also building out uh, the chat features. So if you just want to go there and just do some general chit chat then you can just go to call ben okay and uh, i'll just give you a very brief demo okay so hey there how's it going it's 
going great, thank you. I'm recording a tutorial for my lovely subscribers and hopefully they're going to get a ton of value out of this. So again, you can see your answer transcribed. That sounds fantastic. Your subscribers are lucky to have such a dedicated creator like you. <laughs> I'm sure they'll appreciate the effort you're putting into creating valuable content for them. Good luck with your tutorial recording. I want to improve my English skills. Could you give me some brief advice on what to do, please? That's great to hear that you want to improve your English skills. Here are some quick tips. Practice reading and listening to English regularly. Speak and write in English as much as possible. And consider taking English classes or using language learning apps. Consistent practice is key. <laughs> there we go. It's supposed to be my voice, but when you hear them side by side, you might be <laughs> a little bit doubtful. Anyway, personally, I'm not a fan of the advice. Practice, practice, practice. It's overused and a little bit trite. I think most users just want specifics, like I've been trying to share with you. So, as I was saying, we have that uh, feature on the Bye Bye Human English Tutor.com web app. It works best on your laptop and you can use this feature just to improve your fluency. Or you can even ask for advice and feedback as well, just via uh, through the chat interface. So go ahead, explore that and give me some feedback. It'd be greatly appreciated. And if you are struggling with your exam, can go to you can go to ieltspodcast.com, sign up. You can use our AI essay correction tool for free. You can use our, our new speaking uh, site for free as well. And if you want to take it further, then you can also upgrade for the premium AI essay correct where you get more detailed feedback to help you improve faster. And if you just want somebody to chat with, if you're feeling lonely, then you can go and chat to something that sounds broadly similar to my voice at byebyehumanenglishtutor.com. So that's it from me today. Have a beautiful day. Good luck. Keep moving. You will get there in the end. It's just a matter of persistence. So hang in there, keep going, and have a beautiful day. Thank you. IELTSPodcast.com